the Healing Through Love podcast with Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. In episode 126, learn how to heal from narcissistic abuse, rebuild confidence and grow your business again with Trish Lynn. You have to make that effort to one, authentically be you, say what it is you want to say and want to be seen putting in the work and putting in it, it, it all comes down to a lot of the inner work right mm, that's absolutely. an invisibility is I showed up every single day while I was inside of that relationship and I wasn't seen I am showing up every single day now and I am being seen mm. so the energetics behind the visibility yes Yes, I love it. I love it. Now, this brings me to your Facebook group. So you've got a Facebook group where most of the women, are, are they women? Most women? Yes. 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 So a women. Face, um, it is specifically for women who have been in toxic relationships so that we can build the safe space, the safe community of women who are growing their businesses. We've got dreams. We know we are here for bigger things. Welcome to another episode of Healing Through Love. Each week, we share ideas, experiences, and resources to increase the awareness of domestic and family violence and to empower survivors to grow and thrive. We talk with experts who share their advice or with people who have experienced abuse, no matter where they are on their journey. This is all about healing through love. And now, here are your hosts, Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. Hello and welcome to the Healing Through Love podcast, a space where stories of strength and resilience and transformation unfold. I'm your host, Charlene Lynch, and I'm honoured to be your guide on this journey of empowerment and healing. Today, we have a very special episode tailored specifically to you, whether you're driving the car or sipping a cup of tea or simply taking a moment to yourself. I want you to know that this is a safe place. Healing Through Love is more than a podcast. It's a community, a beacon of hope, a reminder that you are not alone. In this episode, we have a guest who will share a story that will resonate at the core of our mission, a story that illuminates the power of love, resilience, and unwavering strength that lies within each and every one of us. So settle in, take a deep breath and let the healing begin. But before we dive into today's inspiring narrative, a quick reminder that if you find value in our episode, consider supporting us by subscribing and sharing and leaving a review. Uh, Your engagement really helps us reach more hearts and spread the message of healing through love. We've got a very special guest today, Her name is Trish Lynn. Hi, Trish. Yeah, I'm so excited that you're here. She is a content marketing strategist specializing in working with women who have been in toxic relationships. Her bundles specifically help her clients regain their confidence and eliminate self-doubt. Trish knows firsthand how challenging it is to grow a business when you have been in a toxic relationship and how and how speaking in her truth uh, has made such a difference. Hello, Trish. I'd, I'd love it if you're okay to share your story about how you got to where you are today. Yeah, of course, of course. So um, it all started 16 years ago when I guess we're on 17 years ago now, but I was in a toxic relationship for 16 years and married 11 of those years. And, you know, over time, things were good in the beginning, but then they weren't good, but then they were good, and then they weren't good. And then progressively, they got worse and worse and worse. Three kids later, um, I started recognizing a lot of the pieces, a lot of what was going on, and learning about narcissism, learning what a narcissist was, what narcissistic traits were, the cycle of narcissistic abuse. And from that, I was able to start doing the work for myself, the healing work that needed to be done, because I was so far in, I didn't know how to get out. And after watching my kids, you know, especially when my daughter came along, the way that she was being talked to and treated, I knew it was not something I wanted to continue on for her. Mm. So I had my business. 
Um, it was not doing very well. And I learned, you know, that's why I do what I do today. I learned that in the throes of the abuse, I couldn't focus on my business and walk on eggshells every day. I just didn't have the energetic capacity for it. So I began to do the work on myself, got myself out. And here we are today. My business is thriving. I am happier than ever. And helping women do the same thing. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. So look, at, at, with our personal relationships, one of the challenges as a survivor is our boundaries. And when we cross over into a business space, you know, our boundaries are tested over and over and over again, whether it be working with our clients or even, even just in the marketing space. So th there's lessons that you've learned in and around boundaries and toxic relationships. How do you help your students? How do you help your clients with those business boundaries? So the boundaries is number one, not being walked all over, um, you're not settling for a client who is difficult and you know like I, I hear stories I'm like that client's going to be difficult I just just had this conversation and I said I was listening to a client tell me about a client and I'm like you're going to have problems two weeks later sure enough there's problems and like you don't need to be pleasing someone you know when you're in the narcissistic relationships, you become a people pleaser. You become codependent. You want to make everyone happy so you're not walking on those eggshells and you just keep the peace. When you bring that into your business, you're drained. It's the same draining toxic energy. So it's helping them, one, recognize, hey, we don't have to say yes to everything and have the confidence in themselves to not say yes to everything. If it doesn't feel right, it's not right. Mm. Uh, I love this. I love this. One of the biggest challenges for me was the value proposition. So because in that domestic violence situation, in that family violence situation, I had a diminished value or view of my own value. And then now running a business, then, you know, I was struggling to share with my prospective clients, what is, what is this value between where it is before you work with me and after? And it really made me press up hard against the glass to have a really close look at how I value myself, how I value my work and how I value the, the outcomes that I bring, that value proposition that I bring for my clients. Am, am I alone? Is this, is this just me? Or do you see this as a pattern for other survivors see it as a pattern not only the the value of what you bring to the table but actually charging for your services and what you do so many of my clients don't feel worthy of charging the amounts that they should be charging and it's you know getting that starting point and I always say like this is what I see this is this is what we're offering this is the value I see how does that make you feel? Because a lot of time when we're in these abuse situations and we hear money, we tighten up, we constrict, our whole body goes tight. We don't feel worthy of charging that or bringing that into our businesses. So it's working on those aspects as well of, you know, really being able to open up and, and receive that money in, but feel worthy of receiving that coming in. Mm, so there's two things there. There's one, your value proposition, what you deem the value of the goods that you're actually offering, the difference between where the client is before you work with them and where they are after. So that value proposition, but then also how you are in that abundant mindset to be able to lean in to ask for that money and, and come in from that level of power that this is what it's worth. And then, um, and, and, you know, all the money mindset sabotage that happens if you say it, you get paid, but then you do bad things with the money because you don't believe in the long run that you actually deserve it. So with working with clients, how much of what it is that you do is in and around that money mindset and that abundance mindset? A lot. You know, we work on the content strategy. The strategy is just this, this tiny little piece of the work that we do. All of the other work is mindset and energy rebuilding the confidence in yourself, rebuilding your self-worth, trusting yourself again to make those decisions in business. Because mm -hmm. at this point, well, depending on how long you were in that relationship for, you don't trust yourself because you allowed yourself to be in that relationship. Now you've got to make these business decisions, but if you don't trust yourself, you're not going to make these decisions. 
Mm, so true, so true. So look, that kind of brings us full circle back to, you know, niching and micro-niching and, and uh, who we choose as, uh, who we choose to serve fundamentally uh, as a practitioner, as a coach, as uh, someone who wants to make a difference and your services are in and around marketing. What sort of, I love to call it niche resistance, do your clients have when it comes into leaning into that with their history of being a people pleaser? I typically find it's not a resistance, but more a lack of clarity. So it's it's diving in and everyone has this, this thought that they can just create the content that speaks to everyone. But when you speak to everyone, you reach no one. So it's finding that clarity of, okay, this is great. We know what you do, but we're not articulating it now. And finding your voice, being able to share who it is you want to work with, how you want to work with them, and what it is you do. But then, you know, seeing even just the little pieces that are on your mind that you know is going to benefit your ideal clients. When you haven't had a voice for so long, actually being able to say that in your content write it out and hit send is such a difficult task because mm -hmm. there's a fear behind it. You know, what if, what if, what if all of these pieces start to come up? Mm. So it's not even a matter of resistance and niching down. It's a lack of clarity on niching down and then a fear of, you know, actually being able to say what it is you want to say. Mm. Oh, I love it. I love it. So, so how much of this visibility issue is um, for as a survivor? I know that my visibility was something that was very confronting, and uh, yeah. it wasn't until I leaned leaned into that that I was able to leverage that to be able to move through. But you know, how much do you see? Am I alone, or is this something that is there more in my basket of a challenged visibility? Visibility is a big one because you can show up every single day on social media and not be seen. You have to make that effort to one, authentically be you, say what it is you want to say and want to be seen. Putting in the work and putting in, it, it, it all comes down to a lot of the inner work, right? Mm, That's and visibility is I showed up every single day while I was inside of that relationship. And I wasn't seen. I am showing up every single day now and I am being seen. Mm. So the energetics behind the visibility. Yes. Yes, I love it. I love it. Now, this brings me to your Facebook group. So you've got a Facebook group where most of the women, are, are they women? Most women? Yes. 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 So so women women. Um, it is specifically for women who have been in toxic relationships. So that we can build the safe space, the safe community of women who are growing their businesses. We've got dreams. We know we are here for bigger things. But we also have a past that loves to creep in. It loves to come into our mind and just, you know, give us those moments where we want to just toss it all aside, throw in the towel and doubt everything we do. But together we are able to share our stories, support each other, lean on each other and do the things that we are here to do. Mm, it is about community, isn't it? Proximity is power. We are the average of our five closest friends. And uh, when we want to shift and move, as, as you say, many of your clients are feeling stuck and they need that support, is its proximity which is going to help us move forward. Yeah, I love it. Now, you also have a membership program. So can you tell us a little bit more about the membership program, TLC? Yeah, so the TLC membership is um, actually launching the 1st of October. And we're going to have six calls a month for women who are growing their businesses or they could be established, but they're just not getting the results. It's basically a space to tap in, tap out as you need it. If you want to show up to every call, we're here. Um, six calls a month. We're going to have a networking call, a, a co-working call, a mindset call, a strategy call, and then two Q&A style calls where it's going to be like an open round table that you know if someone has a question in for you know the group and I know you specialize in this question I don't want it to be all about me I want it to be a community conversation so I'm going to direct the question to you to best answer it for the other member 
Oh, I love that. I love that. So this is the membership program, which is called TLC, and it's launched on the 1st of October. Now, all of the links to work with Trish and find out more about Trish are going to be in the show notes and also in the show description. And that will also, you'll be able to reach out to get access to the Facebook group and also to the TLC membership as well. I love it. So I want to know what's next for you in your journey to move forward to assist survivors with their with their, with their content, with their messaging, with their marketing? For me, it's just continuing to show up and bring awareness of how that relationship has impacted your business because I am still meeting so many women who are growing their businesses, but they don't recognize that the relationship that they were in, they're, they might not know, they're no longer in it, but it's still the pieces from it, even two and three years out is still affecting how they are showing up in their business, the results that they are getting in their business, and really just bringing the awareness, sharing my story, sharing what it is I do so that I can reach as many women as possible. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, same. Sounds like as if you're on a similar mission. So my mission is to raise the frequency of the planet. I know it's a big call. And I know that it's not something that I can do by myself, but what I can do is help enough wellness practitioners to lift their frequency and then in turn serve more people. So together we're raising the frequency of the planet. And what do they say? They say a rising tide lifts all ships. And so I believe that's what this planet needs at this time, a higher frequency. I love it. We're we're on our merry band of high frequency. I love it. I love it. I love it. As far as I'm concerned, if you don't want to, if you're not in my container, but we're still having a conversation, I'm going to give you everything I know I can give you because I want to see you succeed. Your success is my success, whether it's in a paid container or not, because it is. We are raising the frequency of the world. Mm, I love it. And uh, and the world needs this right now as we go through this new awakening, this new unsettling period. And uh, I'm excited to see what can happen moving forward. Yay. So uh, now I'd love to know what sort of words of wisdom do you have for our listeners today? As you know, many of our audience are survivors either at the beginning or towards the end of their journey, and some of them themselves are practitioners. But what what words of wisdom could you share to them of your own journey and, and where you are right now? Pay attention to how you're feeling. Many of the women that I come into contact with, they're feeling overwhelmed. They're ready to throw in the towel. They're not seeing the results. They don't know what's going wrong. They're doing all of the things. Their nervous system is dysregulated and it overwhelms. And it's coming back to tapping into your body, get out of your head, tap into your body, and really just focus on calming that nervous system so that you can think from a place of clarity. Recognize, okay, I'm doing this right. Start looking for what's going right. Don't focus on what's going wrong and bring your body back into that state of equilibrium. Mm. We always feel stuck or we feel lost or we feel like, you know, why am I even bothering? But we're not stuck. The answers are always there. Mm. And if we open up those conversations with our subconscious mind, we get the answers coming in. Uh, I love it. I love it. I have a, a catch cry and it is that you've got this because I firmly believe that every human on this planet has got the answers inside of them. Sometimes they need a coach and a mentor to help them. Sometimes it's just quiet reflection and journaling, which has been a godsend for me. So are you a girl who journals, Trish? Are you a journaler? I do journal and I love that you just said that catchphrase because that's my my picture on my wall right here says you've got this. That's exactly what it is that's right there because it is. And when we can open up and tap into, you know, that it, everything we need is inside of us. And we feel stuck because we feel in that past version of ourselves. And it's being able to ask ourselves the questions, you know, what can I do for X results and then walk away from it. Stop focusing on the answer, not being there, walk away because the answer is going to come to you. Your subconscious is always looking for ways to bring things around to you. The answers are there, but when we're so focused on what's not working, 
we don't get to see what is working. Mm, I love it. I love it. And that's one of the reasons why I journal because humans have this negative bias. It, it's just yeah. part of our human psychology. And we're sort of even the environment trains us to have a look at and, and lean. Oh, social media teaches you to lean into the negative bias. So yeah. Yeah, if that quiet time just with me and my God and just writing and journaling, for me, it just makes all of the difference. And it just gives me that space between thought and action so that I can really see what the reality is, not what through the misty eyes of everything else. That's exactly. happening. I love it. I love it. This is so, You're speaking my language. I love this. I love this. So, so in your marketing and your messaging, and you've identified that you have a chat with people in and around their niche, and then it's about their lift, lifting their level of visibility, having a level of awareness around the stories that we were telling ourselves when we were a survivor about people pleasing and all those. How are we reflecting now and turning up in our business with those things that we might not even have that level of awareness about? Yes, and they've created the story and we're still perpetuating it now, but lifting that level of awareness so that we can move forward to a greater picture of what's possible for our lives. And that's done because we're shifting our proximity and we're in a, a Facebook group of women who've got similar stories and we champion each other to move forward. And then also in the membership program, TLC, which is, you know, those connected six calls a month so that people have got the opportunity to network, but also see um, an opportunity for other shots the shine the, the, the light on others in fact because yes. they can help move other people forward I love this I love this I love this so the people that work with you are generally ladies who are going through some level of moving away from toxic relationships and they for the most part Trish do they own their own businesses or are they women in business like in corporate um, they own their own businesses. So I work with entrepreneurs and what I've noticed that it's a trend, it's strong women. Mm. The narcissists go after the strong women and now it's bringing them back, bringing back that sassiness, you know, the funness, the confidence, you know, I'm a smart ass and those little pieces of me are coming back. Uh, and I it's fun, right. It's, it's getting to, you know, not be afraid to say the things again that you want to say. You know, if, if someone does something and I have a snippy comment in my head for the most, like I used to just keep it quiet, but now it just comes out and like, and it's funny, but that's who I am. Yes, less filter system. <laughs> I, yes. love it. I love it, I love it. And just turning up authentically as yourself in your own power and un unapologetic. Um, I love that, I love that, I love that. So you've got great plans to move forward and build the membership and do other great things. I love this. It's been such a privilege and a pleasure to have you here and have a conversation. I'm curious from a marketing perspective, because I'm an entrepreneur myself. So um, your clients, they're at the point where they're now paying for ads on Facebook or on a, on a social media platform, or they're doing organic? All organic. Mm, okay, so organic strategies are the long game. Yes. There's no question about that. And this is about that level of authority and turning up with a consistent voice across the platforms. And, and uh, you know, I don't know about you, but Trish, I believe pick a platform. <laughs> what I do notice is that lots of people and particularly women spread themselves too thinly across yep. too many platforms and it's better to turn up more powerfully on one platform oh, and, yep. meet, and meet your audience where they're at. And then it gives you that yep. opportunity to have that level of authenticity as well because you're not sort of having AI create your stuff across the other platforms. I love yep. it. So on well, the and you're not stretched thin, right? Like too many platforms, you're stretched thin. Because every platform wants something different than the next. And you can only be in so many places. And I believe in authentic connections and having the conversations. So that's that's how you grow. Oh, I love it. I love it. You're speaking my language. Marketing is sexy. There's no question about that. It has been beautiful to chat with you today, Trish. I really enjoyed the journey. And if you're listening today and you are a survivor and you are starting a business, please reach out to Trish and have that conversation with her. I ask to get into the Facebook group. Her links will be in the show notes and the show descriptions. And also ask about the TLC, the membership program. If you're listening today and you are a survivor and you want that extra layer of love, 
Healing Through Love offer pamper days both here in South Australia and now in most states in Australia and also overseas, where as a survivor, you come think day spa on steroids and have your hair done, your makeup done, have facials, have massages, have your chakras aligned. Look, the list is endless. There's usually 25 different treatments you can have and come for the day and experience them all. And it is all for free out of us paying it forward to make a difference and shift awareness in and around family and domestic violence. If you're listening today and you are a therapist or a coach and you have a service to give, please reach out to Healing Through Love. We're looking for more women to link arms with us and move forward to shift this level of awareness, have the difficult conversations and hold these pamper days all around the world. So we'd look forward to having a chat with you. That's a goodbye from me and a goodbye from Trish. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Healing Through Love. You can get further resources, see the show notes, or simply reach out to us via our website at htlaustralia.org. Thanks so much for joining us, and we look forward to your company next time on the Healing Through Love podcast.